What happens in the absence of this holistic experience, in the absence of the meditative state? Well, much of the brain begins to atrophy. And in particular, you see the development of what are called functional holes in the brain. I'd like to show you a very interesting chart here where we see a so-called normal brain on the left in this chart. And what we're really looking at is blood flow throughout the brain. You see a fairly even distribution of blood flow on the left. On the right, you see the brain of a violent student. And we see that the brain is basically filled with holes. These aren't actual holes in the gray matter of the brain, but they are so-called functional holes. Parts of the brain that just aren't firing, are not actively participating in our moment-by-moment -moment experience. This is the result of the absence of holistic experience to engage and develop the total brain. In particular, also, we see in this chart a clustering of these functional holes at the top of the right-hand brain, and that's the so-called prefrontal cortex, here beneath the forehead. It's the so-called higher brain, responsible for all of our higher human functions. Moral reasoning, planning, judgment, the ability to consider the implications of our actions, all of this constitutes our higher brain. When the higher brain fails to develop properly and is filled with functional holes, we don't truly have adult human behavior. This higher brain or prefrontal cortex, also called the executive center of the brain, develops mainly between the ages of 12 and 25. If it does not develop by the age of 25, then it won't develop at all. Unfortunately, under stress, which pervades the classrooms today, particularly of our inner cities, and indeed pervades entire regions of our world, under stress, the prefrontal cortex shuts down. And under chronic stress, it shuts down chronically and fails to develop properly. Under acute stress, the prefrontal cortex shuts down because under a stress or fight or flight situation, if somebody takes a swing at you, you have to duck and duck instinctively. It's not the time to philosophize about it. But unfortunately, under chronic stress, the prefrontal cortex shuts down chronically, fails to develop properly, and that is an arrested development of an extremely significant kind. It means that the higher human functions of decision-making, planning, judgment, moral reasoning fail to develop property and, uh, properly, and as a result, you could actually truthfully say we are living in what is predominantly an adolescent society with aggression and short-sighted, narrow-minded behavior all cramped by this improper development of the brain. So transcendental meditation is essential in education and for life because it it develops the total brain and it eliminates these functional holes in two fundamental ways. Number one, it is effective at reducing stress and the deleterious effects of stress on brain functioning. And number two, it actually engages the prefrontal cortex and connects the prefrontal cortex with the rest of the brain so that the higher brain or executive center of the brain can exert executive control over the primitive brain, bringing mature adult far-sighted behavior. Finally, the Transcendental Meditation Program is again the technique for direct experience of the unified field to develop full human potential, higher states of consciousness or enlightenment. As this chart reminds us, the experience of the unified field at the basis of this chart is the maximally expanded state of human comprehension. This expanded state of comprehension that results from total brain functioning, that results from meditation, is the most comprehensive state of consciousness. We could call it global citizenship. It means the ability to comprehend the long-range, far-reaching implications of our actions so that we think and act in a more global way with maximum life-supporting influence for ourselves and for the whole society and for the environment in which we live. Such total brain functioning is called enlightenment. It also means, as this chart again shows, that the fundamental unity of life at the basis of mind and matter becomes a more and more familiar aspect of ourselves. And when the unity of life becomes more and more familiar, 
then the unity of life and the unity of humanity becomes more a living reality in daily life. We begin to see others in terms of ourself. Everything is as near and as dear as oneself. The capacity to love is maximized. And imagine the effect on interpersonal relationships when the capability to love is systematically developed and the, when everything is as near and as dear as oneself. This is really the foundation of ideal interpersonal relationships and a harmonious and peaceful society. So let me summarize this brief introduction to Transcendental Meditation as follows. Transcendental Meditation is the most widely practiced, extensively researched, and broadly prescribed by doctors of any meditation technique in the world. It has profound, scientifically proven benefits for health, vitality, and youthful longevity. It promotes coherent brain functioning, increased creativity, IQ, and peak mental performance. And long-term practice of Transcendental Meditation develops enlightenment, total brain functioning, which brings evolutionary behavior, we say global citizenship, along with inner peace, unity, and social harmony. I sincerely hope that all of you will take this opportunity to learn the Transcendental Meditation program. Thank you very much. It's not space, it's not time, and it can't be seen in rhyme. In the earth, in the air, in the wind and waving sea It's so subtle, yet it's there On the surface everywhere It's so near and yet so far Beyond the thinking of the mind You can call it anything If you think it needs a name Infinity unbounded is forever As one becomes the many The raging seas of change As being moves in waves of bliss As being stays the same